and I think also a lot of people understand uh, that it's a battle. It's and, and, and listen, they're deliberately targeting whether it's the farmers, bourbon makers, or whatever people who voted for President Trump to get the magnitude of what we're talking about here. May third, two thousand and thirteen, there was a commission on theft of intellectual property. How much it cost us? Uh, and this is by China. Three hundred <coughs> billion dollars uh, of that. Fast forward to uh, two thousand and seventeen, commission on theft of American intellectual property. It was an update. The 300 billion leaped to 600 billion dollars from our economy. That's mind-boggling. Well, it is, but it's also a sign that China realized we were really doing nothing about it and that there'd be no repercussions. That America had become complacent. And that was the messaging for at least a decade, right? Uh, so in this case, and especially with the earlier in the week, right, everyone wringing their hands, clutching the pearls about the, what Donald Trump was doing, once again, he proved his own negotiating skills correct and what he said was going to happen would be correct. And, and yet now we've got to make sure that the farmers and everyone else understands that all of these things that he's targeting, he will deliver on. And this is what I think most Americans realize now, that he's a serious man and gets serious results. We're now obviously also trying to get that hostage out of, out of Turkey. But when it comes to money and the intellectual property fight, people say, oh, what are you going to do? It's about the Internet. There's plenty we can do, and Donald Trump's going to deliver on that as well. Of course, of course Kevin, uh, some of this uh, hand-wringing, uh, of course, uh, all revolved around the tactics that President Trump has used, uh, and that's tariffs. I, you know, I don't think he's a protectionist at heart. I know he's not. Uh, but you know, no one throughout this entire saga has been able to tell me any way to make uh, first the EU come to the table and ultimately the rest of our trading partners, including China. How are Democrats handling this? Are they going to be able to celebrate, uh, uh, you know, uh, because I saw one uh, former Obama official saying even if we get these deals, America has lost its place as the world's North Star. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm just confused about it. Well, Charles, I think we need to focus our attention, as you rightly pointed out, on China when it comes to intellectual property. Starting these tariff battles with some of our closest allies, Mexico, uh, Canada, the European Union, is a failed policy. It only resorts to more tariffs that will hurt our farmers. <laughs> you start uh, talking about China, and you, you know, go up to other why, 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 would they, why would they target farmers? <laughs> I mean, far, farming is 1.5% oh, of the, you know, the uh, uh, economy. Uh, you know, sure. We went from 9 million to, to less than two million farmers in this country. Why did they already target our farmers long before the tariff battle began? That's right. Sure. I mean, our farmers are feed the world's largest crop. That's right. Our farmers feed the world's largest crop. That's right. I mean, our farmers feed the world, right? So when you look at levying these tariffs against countries like Mexico and China, you know, China is separate, but when you look at Canada, when you look at the European Union, they want to buy our goods. And starting this fight is so miscalculated by this president. I'm glad he's he blinked. I'm glad he's pulling this back from the Let's bring that in. <laughs> sure. Charles, come, come, come on. I mean, these things. First of all, Trump's tariffs, according to WTO guidelines, his, his tariffs on steel and aluminum are according to WTO rules. China, the EU, Canada, Mexico, their retaliatory tariffs are against WTO rules. So he's finding himself on the right side of the WTO in regards to this. And I'll tell you why they're doing it. It's purely political and they're targeting Trump's base. Who but started I have to it? Say this. Who started I, it, Ned? But you don't, you don't last, yeah. time to re Interrupt yeah. during history. Yeah. 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 Three more times. Billion dollar deficit I have not looked at it. Between America and the EU. Go ahead. I mean, please, I know you're a politician. I've done too much work on this to let you misrepresent to misrepresent facts. Okay, you have your opinion, but you can't have you can't make up facts, Kevin. I'm going to lay it if out I for can you. Continue. Let me let me jump in. Let me let me jump in before okay. it gets out of hand and and, and, and people it's start not out of hand. We're having a civil conversation. No, no, but it's but it's not <laughs> civil if it's if it's laced with lies. It's unfair to the audience. It's not laced with we lies. We have a massive trade deficit with the EU. A massive trade deficit with the EU. Their tariffs are higher. Ding, 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 three times. Canada has oh extraordinarily high tariffs on industries they want to protect, including their dairy farmers and their beef farmers. These, and this is your and and latest the, generation of Democrat strategists. A NAFTA, NAFTA, rather, where Americans were making 150 million, they plugged that one. They plugged that one. They're not necessarily our friends when it comes to money. How many friends do you have that do that to you?
Go ahead, Dave. I'll let you finish. protectionist nations in the country or in the world. First of all, first of all, we did not start this trade war. We did not start this. China did decades ago. They did. We it need with to their keep the attention on China. Trade. Absolutely. First, we're let me agree. finish. Let me finish. Yeah, they started with unfair trade, <laughs> fair, uh, uh, unfair trade practices, intellectual property theft, forced technology transfers, subsidized economy. They devalued their currency to sell cheaper products. And you know what, Charles? I don't even really think this is a trade war. This is about who's going to control the technology of the future and who's going to be the dominant economy 30 years from now. Yeah. And I think a lot of the American people are figuring this one out. And so Trump is going to protect the farmers in the short term because, again, I think China's economy is far more fragile than people think. We're I a agree. major game of no, I... We keep pushing. Right. I think China folds because here's, the economy here's, folds, right. President Xi folds, and he doesn't want to have that here's, happen. Here's another irony with China's economy over the last year or so. They actually spend $1 trillion with a T propping the yuan. So for them now to let it tumble in the midst of a credit crisis, I mean, they're already, the People's Bank of China is already, they're already giving cash to banks and asking them to buy bad debt. We know what that equals yep. because we went through our own version of that not long ago. So he, he, here's the thing, Tammy. Let me, yeah. let me, I'm sorry, Ron, you, you're making too much noise. Let me bring Ron in for a second. Uh, because, you know, here's the thing. I think that, unfortunately, the rest of the world knows how to use our rules, our civility, uh, and, and the sort of games that I think we used to play on each other in high school. You can't be a free trader and like tariffs. You're not a conservative and like tariffs. You know, I'm glad President Trump is seeing through that. It's not about liking well, tariffs. It's about fighting fire with fire. I don't know you what have to remember, part of our policy was to subsidize okay. other governments across the world to try to help them and to prop up. And we'd, we'd accept their tariffs because we knew our economy was stronger. But the problem is, is we devastated our heartland with those types of policies. Canada is a great example. Canada is one of the most protectionist places in the world. And you mentioned it. Lumber, dairy, uh, steel. They're using these really extreme tactics to protect their industry. And yet they, Trudeau gets up there with this holier than their attitude when we do it. At least President Xi's honest. And he's just just trying to defend China and trying to do what's in their best interest. And finally, we have a president who actually is trying to negotiate. Now, I think we have to make sure that we're careful to not devastate certain industries by, by with these retaliatory tariffs. And there is a really fine line. But I do think that uh, Trade Rep Lighthizer and President Trump do have a strategy to what they're doing, and it is playing out. And, and, and we should add, let it play out. If I could add, too, that there is an important element here beyond just the financial differences and getting an even playing field. It strengthens our allies to be strong. Okay, we know for some time newspapers have been in trouble, but there's a backstory to what we're going to show you now. Publishing giant Trunk cutting in half the newsroom at the New York Daily News, including the top editor Jim Rich, saying the publication will now focus more on digital and breaking news, notably crime, civil justice, and public responsibility. This has been a left-leaning New York City newspaper. It has been a frequent critic of the president over the years. The Daily News parent company Trunk. The stock of that company closing the day in the red. Kelsey Harkness is back with us along with Democrat strategists. We welcome at Ron Seabright. Good to see you guys. You know, Kelsey, both New York Mayor Bill de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, they're worried about what is going on at the Daily News. The governor saying, quote, this will undoubtedly devastate many households, hurt an important New York institution. Your reaction to this? Look, as somebody in the journalism industry, Canada, my heart does go out to those who lost seconds, their jobs today, but I think now, this was a result of something that we already know. Newspapers are a dying breed, and maybe, just maybe, the New York Daily News put out one too many provocative headlines about That's President true. Trump, and Americans just aren't taking them seriously. I think that this, this actually presents them with an opportunity to decide whether or not they want to be tabloid news or whether or not they want to be real uh, journalists. I hope they choose the latter because we all know that we need more truthful and trustful journalists, particularly at the okay. local level. Uh, Antoine, go ahead. With, with all due respect, I think that's just fundamentally not true. Um, what, we, what we've seen across the country, this idea of recalibration for a lot of publications, a lot of people moving online. You have a lot of small town newspapers who have gone away. And I don't think this newspaper shutting down has anything to do with the stories. But you got to like get both sides of the customer I, 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 base, right? And appeal what, to them, right? 
happened since Donald Trump has taken office, there's been an all-out assault on the media. And it's almost like the things that we've been dependent upon, particularly in small-town America, like where I grew up, the local paper was how we got our news. It was very dependent yeah. upon. But this idea has been tarnished and bashed because of this president. Your this point's well taken about fake news because there are a lot of solid reporters at these outlets so that the president is saying fake news, Kelsey. And the president has used that tagline, fake news, going back to the 70s. When he was, you know, going after news reporters who questioned what he was doing in his real estate empire, Kelsey. Look, I think a lot of the provocative headlines that the New York Daily News puts out on the, as the face of its entire newspaper has cheapened the actual real journalism Kelsey, that we know that institution is capable of. And that's why so many Americans are picking up in this, con of this concept of fake news, because they are just exaggerating every little outrage under the Trump administration. Okay, Kelsey, you can point to Quickly. any other publication that may lean left or right, and that's not the case. The bottom line is the way we do news is different. Okay. Our cell phones no, make the bottom much line is, a different place. You've got no business being abstract. All right, let's get I mean, to it's what a joke. Right.